Hi ladies, welcome back. It's that time of month again. I'm going to do my favorites and fails for the previous month. I was a little busy last month. We actually went on vacation. By the time this comes out, it'll be a couple of weeks ago, but just preparing for that and a lot of things. I didn't do a lot of shopping, but what I did do, I found some really good things this month, but I also found a couple that just didn't hold up to my standards. So I'd like to show them to you. Welcome to my channel. My name is Bonnie, and this is Bond's Ageless Beauty, where together we're finding out how we can bring our inner beauty out through skincare, makeup, and style. I hope you'll join me on this journey. While you're here, I do hope that you'll join my community by hitting the subscribe button, ringing the notification bell so you're notified every time I put up a new video every week, and watch it all the way through and give it a big thumbs up at the end. Let's get started. I'm going to start with a favorite. Um, this is my absolute favorite of the whole month, and that is my T3 Cura hair dryer. I finally broke down and bought a better hair dryer. After I got my hair done, I cut it all off and everything. I wanted something that would style my hair easily, and I love the fact that this has three heat settings and two fan speeds. It also has a button here for a cool shot. And you don't have to hold it in, you push it in and it stays. So when you're finishing off your hair, so what I will do is I will start out on medium heat with a high fan, dry my hair, and this dries it so fast. And it gives it shine because it's got the ion technology. It's got a filter here on the end where you can take it off and clean it. So make sure that it keeps the same power on it. It also came with two heads to it. I usually just keep it on the thin one. This is your styling one. The other one is for wider one for blow drying and drying it, but because my hair is shorter now, I don't need that. Then when I get it almost all the way dry, basically perfectly dry almost, I will turn the fan down and I will turn it on the cool shot and set everything in. It really helps my hair stay because I'm trying to get the lift in the back and get the style that I want and it really really helps. It's definitely worth the money and I found it on sale so that was even a better deal. So keep an eye out for it. I'll put a link where you can get it but I know Christmas is coming up and sales are coming up. There's a little jingle in the background and that is Loki coming to join us. Come here. Come here. Oh he doesn't want to. <laughs> I'm going to try to back up and get him. Come here sweetie pie. He's being difficult. Oh, goodness. This is Loki, which I know you have seen on previous videos. This is my one and a half year old miniature schnauzer. He's my baby. <laughs> we have a nine year old Yorkie Poo as well. That is our other baby. And um, they are our joy. They are our children other than our daughter, which we have, who is getting married next year. So that's exciting for me. But let's continue on. I'm going to do a couple more favorites and then I'm going to do a couple of fails that I had for this month. I went out and I wanted to try to find another foundation. I'm always on the hunt for foundations that are better for mature skin. I have drier skin. I have fine lines and wrinkles and it gets drier as the winter goes on. So I'm really on the hunt to try to find something that's moisturizing that doesn't break up. And I've been having issues with that a lot with even primers and stuff and I'm going to show you a couple of primers that ended up failing for me and I'm on the hunt for the perfect primer as well. But one of the foundations that I tried this month was from Bare Minerals. It was their Bare Pro foundation. I got this right when um, Ulta had their 21 Days of Beauty and I didn't get a chance to try it right away but when I did try it I loved it. This is a liquid foundation. It's, it actually gives pretty good medium to full coverage and it's very buildable. I love the texture of this. I like the bottle. It's a nice glass bottle. It's got a pump to it. It's a sort of thinner consistency, but it gives you really good coverage and it's very buildable and I love that and it feels good on your skin. And as I told you before, um, when I first started this, I worked at Bare Essentials for over three years, and I loved it. And I used their mineral powder, mineral foundation that only had five ingredients in it, and I loved it. For years, I loved it, but as my skin got drier, 
I switched back to liquid foundations and I was very happy when Bare Minerals came out with a liquid foundation because they are a good brand. The other foundation that I tried and other I've heard other bloggers and other YouTube influencers talking about number seven. I love number seven's finishing powder. That is my favorite drugstore finishing powder. So I decided to take a trip to Target. I don't go to Target very often. Um, there's one close to me, but I just don't have time and I just don't go there that often, but I know they carry number seven. So I went and I was looking for the foundation. This one is the Restore and Renew Multi-Action Serum Foundation. It does have a broad spectrum SPF 20, which as I have said before, that's just a bonus, but I don't use it as my only sunscreen. I always put sunscreen on first. This is what I have on today. It's got light to medium coverage. It is a serum foundation, and again, it's a little bit thinner consistency, but it feels very hydrating on. They had a couple of different versions of foundations there. This one is for um, made for maturing skin that's dry and has fine lines and wrinkles in it. I absolutely, this has become one of my favorites so far for this month. The two of these I've just been using all the time. I'm trying out another one that I found that I was watching an, um, one of the influencers going back watching older videos and this is a foundation that was um, talked about back then and I'm giving it a try. I'm not going to tell you what it is and I'll let you know next month what I think of it if it's good or bad. It's very very economically priced and we'll see. Sometimes you get what you pay for. Sometimes you can find something that's very inexpensive that works good. So I'll let you know on that. Now I'm going to talk about a couple of fails. As I was talking about um, foundations, I was talking about primers. And these are three primers that I tried that just didn't work for me. And I'm not saying they don't work for other people, but they didn't work for me. I was in the um, in Myers. We have Myers here in Michigan. And I was just walking through the beauty department. I was looking for something else. And I saw Elf's new um, Puff Puff Primer. It's Hump Derived Cannabis Satillo Primer. And I thought, well, you know what? It's supposed to be a nourishing face primer that helps prep your skin for makeup. Well, I tried it, and when it comes out, it looks like it's almost like a moisturizer. And it does blend in very, very well. But as far as working well with foundation, I didn't think it did. It made my foundation break up and I don't know if it's because it has too many moisturizers or what it has in it, but when I put it on with foundation, it seems to break up my foundation and it doesn't seem to work well. I've tried it with three different foundations and so far it, it hasn't worked with any of them. And I'm going to keep trying. I'm not going to say that it's not going to work with any of them. I will because I still have it left. I'll give it a try here and there and see if it'll work with a different foundation. I do know that sometimes foundations work better with certain types of primers. Sometimes silicone primers work better with foundations that may have some silicone in them and vice versa. So I'm going to keep trying with some other foundations, but as of right now, it hasn't worked. The other one that I tried from e.l.f. and I just was on Amazon shopping like I love to do, and I found this. This is the e.l.f. Plus Glow Primer Stick Plus Coconut and Shea Butter. Thought it would be good for my dry skin and I thought for traveling it's a primer stick so it comes out and it's actually a little stick and it just goes on and I have to tell you this feels super hydrating with the coconut oil and everything that's in it it feels wonderful but again I didn't notice that it meshed really well with my foundations I have some lighter foundations that it did go okay with that are just like serum foundations that are really light, tinted moisturizers. It went okay with those because it does have the hydrating properties in it. So it worked okay with them. It dries down a little bit like tacky, which is good, but certain foundations just didn't work well with it. And maybe it's because of my dry skin. And I was so excited because it had all the coconut and shea butter in it. I thought, okay, this is great. It's going to be even extra moisturizing for me. 
but it didn't work. It worked with a couple of, like I said, tinted moisturizers, but some of my foundations, it sort of broke them up. So those were a fail to me. The other one was the Physician's Formula Butter Believe It Primer. And I had a, I thought, you know what? This is probably gonna be like the Elf Putty Primer, which I do love. I do love Elf's Putty Primer. And I thought this was the same. And it feels sort of the same, but it just didn't seem to make my foundation last all day. When I put it on, I would notice that my foundation, like maybe four or five hours, and I look, I go in the bathroom at work, and I'm like, oh, what happened? My foundation is all absorbed in. So it just, it wasn't that it made my foundation break up. It's just that it didn't make my foundation last long. And because I have dry skin, my foundation seems to absorb into my skin. So I put tons and tons of hydration on my skin before I put my primer on just to keep my skin plump and moist and then try to lock that in. And most of the time I can get my foundation to last through a work day, which I figure is really good. If I can get it to last eight hours, that's good for me. I don't think any foundation has ever lasted 10, 12 hours for me just because my skin does seem to absorb it in. So those were a couple of fails. Now I'm gonna go back to a couple of favorites. And I'm gonna compare a couple of things. This, Aussie Instant Freeze Hairspray. This was recommended by Cheryl Lee from Cheryl Lee's Box of Chocolate. Absolutely love it. My hair is cut sort of like hers is now, and it's short, and she said it keeps her hair up and spiky. Absolutely love this. It's got quick spurts. You can quick spurt. It doesn't stay on unless you really hold it. So you can target it where you want to. It also has jojoba oil and Australian sea kelp. And this is got four dots. It's extreme hold, and it does. This is just amazing to me. I can put this on my hair and it will stay right where it's at, and it's been windy lately. My hair doesn't move. I mean, it's, it's nice. It stays where it's supposed to be, and it doesn't feel, I don't know, I guess it's like cement. It stays where it's supposed to, but you can still touch it and it's, you know, it moves and everything, <clears throat> which is a plus. And it washes out nice. It's not like it's really hard to wash out. On the other end, and I really, when I had my hair a different style, this worked fine for it. This is the Verb Hold Plus Volume Strong Hairspray. This works fine if you have something where you're just trying to get light control and control flyaways and stuff. It's not extra hold or firm hold. I use this, I used this on my hair when I first got it cut and it just does not, it doesn't hold it. I mean, it, it'll hold it a little bit, but the wind blows it and it's not, it's not what they call firm hold as far as I'm concerned. It works for other things like when my hair was longer and I just, you know, needed it to just sort of hold it a little bit in place and get the flyaways away and stuff like that. But I wouldn't call it a, a full strength extra hold hairspray. It's a good lightweight one, but if you want a strong hold, definitely go with the Aussie. If you want something that's a lightweight one and you're just trying to hold little flyaways and different things, this is better as a lightweight one, even though it says it's strong hold hairspray. I don't think it is. I only have a couple more things. I have um, two more favorites and a fail. This has become a great favorite to me. And this, you're going to think, what in the world is this? This is the Sigma Switch. I absolutely love this. This has become my buddy when I am putting on my makeup. This is silicone, and it's for quick changing your eyeshadows. If you're using an eyeshadow brush and you want to change colors, it's got on the top eyeshadow. This is like your flat brushes, your blending brushes. It's in a circle, so you can go like that. This is for liquids. This one says it's for powder, and this one's for contour and bronzer. And then you can turn it over the other side, and it's got pretty much the same things. It's got like your blending, your eyeshadow. This has got cream. This one's got blush, and this one's got highlighter. So they're all different textures on them, and they're made like different, like if you want to do a circle, a blending brush, it's made into circle. 
and it actually does take the color out. And it's so easy to wash because it's silicone. Put it in a thing of soapy water and it washes right up. Mine's a little dirty right now because I just did my makeup before I came up here. But this is amazing for just getting color off if you want to be able to use the same brush. Again, if you don't have a lot of brushes. I have several blending brushes, but there are some mornings, or like even when I was traveling, I didn't want to take three or four you know, for the week, so I brought my Sigma Switch with me so I could just take one flat brush, one blending brush, one smaller brush, and I could just, in between the colors, clean it out. It worked amazing. I would highly recommend this. And speaking of Sigma, the other favorite things, and you'll see that I just did a previous video on it, that I tried Sigma products for the first time. And some of my favorites for this month are the Sigma eyeshadows. These are wonderful, ladies. I, I mean, I know Sigma sometimes, you know, most of the higher brands, they're $40, $50 for an eyeshadow palette. Sigma always has sales going on, and I got some of these for 20 something dollars. They are wonderful, and as I've showed you before, I showed you a lot of the different colors. Every one of theirs, the bigger palettes, they come with a brush with them, but their colors are so, so, so blendable. Their shimmers, I'm going to show you a couple of these shimmers. Look at the shimmer on this. These are amazing. I'm going to swatch a couple for you. And I'm going to swatch some of the mattes. I'm going to swatch a matte next to it. Look at those colors. There's such good payoff on them. And they're so creamy and they're very, very blendable. That is just a wonderful thing to me. When you get older, you don't want an eyeshadow that doesn't blend easy because it's just going to move your eyelid and everything wrong. And I actually have um, a little bit of flakes here. I actually am wearing... The Enchanted palette today. I love this one. It's getting into fall. It's actually October when I'm taping this, and I think it's going to be October maybe when it um, premieres, maybe November. But I love everything about these palettes. They're very blendable, so they work good on any kind of skin texture, whether you're young or old. They're creamy. They're highly pigmented, so you don't have to use a lot. You can just tap your brush in, and then you can build the color up. So I think that's wonderful. And their color stories, they're, each one of their palettes are so different. So no matter if you're warm undertone or cool undertone, you should be able to find a palette that you're going to like. And yes, they do have some, some colorful ones, like their Cinderella palette. But I love this palette because it does have some neutral colors in here. You're going to see some neutral colors in here. And then they're going to add the pop of color, which is what I did today in the corner of my eyes. I had neutrals on, and then I put like a darker green in the corner of my eye. So there's ways to use all of these, and I'm not saying you have to get all of them. I'm a makeup junkie, and Sigma is becoming one of my favorites, along with my Huda Beauty palettes, which I absolutely love. So those are something that I would highly recommend. Um, I love their blush, too. I didn't bring the blush up with me, but I tried their blush, and I absolutely love that, too. It's very blendable as well. Now I'm going to do my last fail for the month, and it's this. This is the Tarte C Surfer Curl Mascara, and I did a video on this, and I was trying it something new, and I gave my first impressions on it, and I wasn't real thrilled with it. I seem to have a problem with Tarte mascaras, and I know some people absolutely love them, but they seem to flake on me. So, I waited a little while and I'm like, I know some people say they get better after a couple times. So I put it aside and then I pulled it back out this month and I'm like, okay, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it again. And without fail, I had flakes here and I had flakes under my eyes, like lots of flakes. And I don't know why. I've tried probably four different kinds of Tarte mascaras and they just don't seem to work with me. They work with a lot of other people, and I know some people absolutely love them. But this one really, I mean, right from the get-go, it flaked. I can't believe I said get-go. You can tell them my age. <laughs> but it flaked right from the beginning, and to me, that's not a good sign. I know as things dry out, they will flake, but this flaked right from the beginning, so that was a fail for me. I'm not saying it's going to be a fail for everyone. 
it just didn't work on my eyes and my lashes so everyone is different all of these products just as I was saying some of these primers they worked on some things they didn't on others but everyone is different so they may work on your skin as I said I have severely dry severely dry skin I will do an updated skincare routine in a couple of weeks maybe or about a month what I change for the winter and it, it's a lot different because I have to add a lot more moisture to my skin just to keep it so it doesn't start flaking so with that those were my monthly faves and fails my faves are absolute faves I love every single one of them from the foundations to my hair dryer to my eyeshadows to my hairspray my fails they're not horrible some of them but they're just not working right for me that I would ever purchase them again. So I do hope that you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. As I said, I'm new with this. I'm starting out on YouTube. I love doing this. I love talking about makeup. I'll tell you something really quick before I end. Uh, when I went on vacation a couple of weeks ago, all of my friends were the big thing is they ask me questions about skincare and makeup and I always bring a little basket or bag of stuff to give away to my friends because I buy so much and I'm in BoxyCharm so I get so much and they'll ask me should I be using retinol what should I use on my face and this and that I love doing it and actually a good friend of mine a really close friend of mine that is like a sister to me and my mother-in-law both were asking questions about things and my mother-in-law has been watching some of my videos and she loves them and she had questions so for their birthdays, I gave them each a bag full of different kinds of skincare that I thought was good for them because I love doing that. I love helping women. I love teaching women what will help them and what won't help them. So I'm, I'm not an esthetician. My daughter is an esthetician, so I've learned a lot from her. But I love doing this, ladies, so I do hope that you will continue on this journey with me. Subscribe. Tell your friends about it. If you have friends that you think would be interested in my channel, I would really appreciate it if you tell them about it as well. Thank you so much. Go out and have yourself a wonderful blessed day, and we'll see you again soon.